Hello and welcome to volume two of The Metrical Dinianicus with Laura O'Brien. I am an author and co-founder of the Irish Pagan School here in Waterford in Ireland. And we are, as I said, on volume two. So if you've missed the rest of volume one, which was all about Tara, all Tara all the time, uh, go back. There are six episodes of various poems and there is also an introduction which will lay out exactly what we're doing, what source material, why we're doing it, how it's useful and all of that good stuff. So there's a playlist that will come up on the screen above here somewhere or um, it'll be linked below or you can go to the playlists at the Irish Pagan School YouTube channel and you'll be able to find it. So we're going to read Rath Essa today, and this is talking about Mither and Etain and various uh, other bits and pieces. So let's get into that. So Rath Essa. Here settled, as we believe, after coming to a goal eagerly sought, the daughter of Uchib Arif and of Etain the noble. Essa was the name of the maid, from her is Rath Essa called. A hundred of every sort of feast without abatement were brought by her. It was a choice tribute. Mither's fosterling the fair woman was, with wine and mead to drink. Nine years did the maiden spend at Breleth with the spirit of a handmaid. In spite of Uche Arab, Mither bore off the festive Etain from Freman though bright of brow, so she left mournful Bamba. Said Codal of the withered foot, ye need not to search for her. In Breleth is the beginning of our search. Tis thither she has gone a wooing by the side of Ucha Arab. Came the hosts of noble Aaron from Fremond, though bright of brow, to sack bright Breleth. Nine years were they about that sacking. Its speed was none too great. Mither at this forcible entry, he was busy destroying the work. After the sack of the fairy fort, there came 50 hardy men. Shapely was that tribe to talk with the lance bearing kings. Then were brought on a Wednesday, t'was a famous tale I have heard, Two Uche in form like Etain, thrice fifty women, excellent knight, might, excellent might, it may have been an excellent knight, but you know. From them he chose out his own right pure daughter. False was the declaration Mither made that this was the bargain agreed upon. She it was bear Mesbuchala, mother of friendly Conora. It was a subtle affair. She reared her to be over Eber's high race. When Uche went again to sack bright Breleth, he bore off his wife, having reunited with her from Mither, glorious feet. Twas then he demanded his honour, fine from Mither, did Uche the upright, the fair and strong, and obtained it after award by law. This is the fourfold demand that Uki Arav made, with many a distinguished company, with tale of shields and swords, to build a causeway across the bog of Lam Lamriga, to plant a wood growing wild over Brefna, to clear stones from the bottoms of great Meath, and to set rushes over Tepta. O oh, daughter, demand of me, said Uki, tell me now, which fortress of my fortresses thou desirest, and it shall be bestowed on thee by me. Then it was she chose Rathessa, a precinct with a fair lawn, a seat whence she could keep watch, whence she might see the three fortresses. The mound of brew of the roads, one of three fortresses built aright, fit for a hundred, Duvgil in Tara, Fair Don Criman in hope. 
Then was the wrath bestowed by Uki, a word without delusion, with everything she demanded, with plenty of treasures therein. Mither after the expiry of truce came about the bold award to Uki once more about the same just business. Mither prayed the noble prince for the strong keep where was begotten, Sigmal, his daughter's son, who dwells in noble Shimenta. Ogniat was his mother's name. She was daughter to Mither. Not evil was her disposition, though she knew not rule nor law. Attain of the bright brows was born to the west, though proud was her birth with the head of Uchi Arab. So she was in Shinenta, beyond the water. In the west is the mistress of numerous hosts with Sigma, a fairy place without delusion, with the glorious, no, with the valorous grandson of Mither, and she has not returned hither. So that's an interesting one that has been picked up in a number of different stories and tales and mythology and um, anything, anything really to do with Mither and Etain um, is being either retold or alluded to within this particular poem. Um, Breleth is still the name of the mountain um, up around Longford and um, there is reference as well to the um, to build the causeway across the bog. Funnily enough, there has actually been a causeway across a bog found in that area. So if you look up Corle Trackway, C O R L E A, you will find the archaeological history, which actually matches to this mythology to the story of the task that was set um well one of the tasks obviously to plant the wood to clear the stones to set the rushes and to build a causeway um one of the tasks that was set which matches up the mythology and the archaeology not for the first time that that's happened but um it is an interesting example so corley trackway um will be an interesting uh, contextual reading for you as you um, look at the story of Mither and Attain. So hopefully that's been useful to you and uh, we do get into Newgrange next. We have Brunaboynia 1 and Brunaboynia 2. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and you get the bell for notifications. Myself and John are doing daily videos as we as I record this uh, we are mid-February 2022 and we have been doing daily videos so make sure that you have subscribed to the channel you will get a variety of different topics from either myself or my partner and co-founder of the Irish Pagan School John O'Sullivan, Anch Gailey Bjog, the Dagda Bard. So um, if you like this if you're finding it useful if you find the act of having the mythology being read to you as, um, you know, useful for accessibility or for um, the ability to just understand it a little bit better when it's being read rather than trying to read it yourself. And um, if you find the pronunciation of the names to be useful, because I know that that can be daunting for people who aren't familiar with, I mean, I'm not familiar with all of these names, but because I speak modern Irish, I'd, I'd be able to give it a fair go, you know, even mentally give it a fair go. So um, my pronunciation may not be perfect, but at least I have the basis down for how things work within the, the Irish language. Even though the older Irish is definitely different to um, modern Irish that I speak. So anyway, hopefully that's been useful to you and uh, make sure you comment and like the video and just show the algorithm and me that this is a useful and worthwhile exercise because these videos get a lot less engagement than our other videos, definitely. Um, but I'm happy to keep doing them as long as people are finding value from them. So do let me know if you do, okay? Gurmagath, August Slongafol. I will see you in the next